Alright, so this is going to be a quick tutorial on making a game object toggle button using VR, uh, VRChat's new Udon system. Uh, basically, we're just going to be having a button that turns a mirror on and off. I assume this would be the most practical application of this that uh, new users would like to uh, basically test out for themselves. I'm going to be doing this in uh, the Udon graph editor and then again as a Udon Sharp script, which is a uh, asset made by Merlin. It essentially interprets uh, C Sharp script as Udon information and allows you to just code instead of using the uh, node editor. Uh, it has some ups and downs. Um, coding with C Sharp definitely takes a lot more like scripting knowledge, but it makes up for its learning curve with being a lot more reliable than the node editor for VRChat. We're just going to go to our button and add Udon behavior. And program source new. Uh, and just this puts us in the scene. Actually, no, don't do that. Let's delete this. Just make it right here. That way you don't have to worry about renaming it or anything. I'm just going to do graph program asset and I'm going to call this button toggle. So we're going to toggle a game object on and off. Alright, we're going to open Udon graph. Now that we're here, I'm going to hit auto compile and spam that button to make sure it works. So we are going to want this button to turn this mirror on and off. So we need to get this game object. Um, so we're going to do game oop, game object and the first thing is variable and this allows us to basically snag this mirror and use it as something within our script. I'm going to call this target and since we want to access this from the inspector not just in the script I'm going to set it to be public. Now uh, if we want to interact with it we can just do add node events interact and then this event will fire whenever you touch the button. It will give it that little blue outline. So we are going to want to we are going to want to set the game object to be active. So space to search. If space for some reason doesn't search, then just go up here and press add node. Sometimes you have to wait a little bit. Sometimes it just doesn't work. <laughs> uh, and search game object set active and set active is one word hit enter and we've got this right here so basically to go between nodes you just drag from one arrow to this it has to go in this line I can't drag this to this node it has to be the one going in and we want to get this target game object for our instance so I'm going to search get var for get variable and it's the first thing that shows up and just click that and it automatically selects target as it's the only variable that we have I'm just gonna put this here and plug it into instance the instance is the game object we're modifying now right now if we were to run this you would interact with it it would find this object and set it to false turning it off however we want to be able to get whether or not it's presently active and turn it on and off accordingly like if it's off, we want to turn it on and vice versa. So we need to get, uh, we need to go back. Yeah, this search can be a bit laggy. There's a lot of things that it has to go through when you search. Uh, we want game object get, get active in hierarchy. In hierarchy just means it looks in your entire list of all the things that are in the scene and determines whether or not it is active within that list. It is, it's all you need to worry about. I'm going to copy this and paste it and we're going to use this to drag into here. Now if I was to put this into here then it would just say if it's active turn it on. If it's inactive turn it off which is doing nothing so we need to invert this information now to say invert you actually say bool because this is a bool variable uh, well this will be the information that we're taking here a bool 
space. Negation. There we go. Boolean unary negation. Uh, which is a complicated name for invert variable. Put that here. And we get, let's say this is active, this turns it inactive, and then we put the result from that into the value here. So if I hit compile, we should be able to go over to button, and we see target as an option right here. And we just put our mirror right here. I'll just control S to save, head back to our scene. And I'll go back to here, log in. Come on, sign in. Oh no, you know my username. It's almost as if you were on this channel and could see it. All right, I'm gonna hit build and test, and this will load up VR chat eventually. <laughs> uh, so one thing that can commonly happen is, let's say, uh, the node graph didn't properly update. Uh, it seemed like it did because we were able to access the target from outside the script But there's a chance that oh, it didn't quite understand what the variable was so If you go up to it and click it it just turns itself off instead of the mirror. Let's actually see if that's gonna happen Yep <laughs> I, I'm a, a, a future seer no. uh, So that's a, a little issue with nodes at the moment they can just be a bit dumb on their own. So the way to fix that actually is to select your node graph, control D to duplicate and delete the old one and remove the automatically generated one at the end of the name for that. Go back to your button and throw on the duplicated one. We'll go here, we hit compile and then this one will work. Build and test and we'll boot this one up and see if we get uh, better luck this time. <laughs> All right, load this in. All right, we got ourselves, we got the mirror, we got the button, and we did it. This button turns the mirror on and off as fast as we can click it. Uh, now that we got this one fully working, let's go replicate this within boot on sharp. Uh, some of you may just be ready to quit here. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Um, this is a tutorial for people who are beginning and I understand that C-sharp scripting is a little bit more complicated than being able to just visualize the nodes going around. But I do recommend doing both so that you can get used to it. I'll try to do uh, as simple of a tutorial as I can here as well when it comes to both C-sharp scripts and Udon scripts. So I have a asset pack uh, Udon Sharp imported. Uh, I'll just give a link in the description for that. But see if I come back to the folder of buttons. I'll just right click here, create U sharp script. And I'm gonna name this button toggle sharp. Just for now. This generates two things. It generates a C sharp script and a Udon sharp asset. This asset essentially just uh, interprets this script as a uh, graph editor so you won't be able to edit these scripts within the graph itself but VR chat will think that this is a Udon script so we are going to go to our button and we are going to drag this U sharp script onto the program source instead of our original one and I'm gonna press oh ignore the fact that the mirror went white it's just an issue that pops up now and then works perfectly fine in game sometimes in editor it just goes white so I'm gonna double click on source script which is the C sharp script we have here and this will load it up in our editor I'm personally using Rider uh, because I have a free student license for it at least until I graduate 
Um, you'll probably be using Microsoft Visual Studio. There's not a whole lot for differences outside of some visual things. In terms of programming, they both can accomplish the same thing. So uh, where we put our void, no, no, where we put our public game object that we used for tar uh, target uh, is essentially what is the space before the actual script. So after this, I'm going to put right here, uh, public game object at target. Now, if I control S to save and come back to here, you'll see it shows up here. And actually, since we had a variable named target in the old one that this udon behavior was using, it automatically recognizes that it's the same thing. So it auto filled it with the mirror object. If I go back to here, uh, we won't actually be using the start. We will be using uh, the interact. Here we go. And this will be whenever you click it, it'll do the thing. Uh, you can find all of the different uh, events that you can access by pressing control click on Udon Sharp Behavior up here and scrolling all the way to the bottom. You get this nice list of different things like you can do things on spawn, uh, on video play, uh, whenever you drop something, just different stuff like that. Uh, for now I'm going back to here and when it interacts we want to uh, say take target uh, dot set active uh, so basically scripts kind of go inverse so the target will be set active uh, to the state of whatever target if I can spell it all target uh, so basically this is taking the activity of this one uh, and saying whether or not it's active and if we put an exclamation point in that it'll do the opposite of that which is the boolean unary negation also known as inverse by people who are uh <laughs> who don't want to say as many words like me <laughs> all right control s uh, sometimes it takes your script a little moment to compile when you come back to the editor and it'll be like, oh no, my Unity froze. Well, there will be a little loading wheel down here that you can just see. And, uh, and if that doesn't go away after like 10 minutes, yeah, maybe your Unity froze. But typically you can just wait it out and everything should work. So I'm just going to hit uh, force compile script. This just makes sure that everything's imported correctly and tells Udon how to run things. So if we go back to build and editor, I can build and test, and we'll see if we get the uh, if we get lucky and everything works perfectly. I don't know. I could have had a spelling error somewhere. Um, however, with like C sharp scripting, you don't have to worry that oh it didn't like compile right. Guess I have to delete the script and start over. Uh, fortunately you don't have to worry about VRChat ruining it as an asset. If you screwed something up, you can just go back and edit. Sometimes your node graph will just be completely destroyed after an update. Um, I don't know. Updates may be a bit uh, softer on node graphs now that uh, we're no longer in the open beta and we're still instead in the live version. But eh, we'll just have to see. Here we are. We got our button, we got our mirror, and it turns it off. Well, what do you know? Screwed something up. All right, if we come back here, see, it gets an invert of target. Let's change this to instead be target dot get active. Target dot active in hierarchy, which is the same node that we used in the Udon Sharp script. So this will tell us whether or not it's active within the scene. I guess I thought that just target would work, but oh, oh well, live and learn. That's what tutorials are for. <laughs> All right, once it's done compiling, we can uh, feel safe to 
I guess, log in. Uh, if you ever get stuck on the signing in, just hit Control S to save and uh, sometimes over oh there we go all right May maybe VR chats uh, servers are just being a little bit slow at the moment all right we'll get this all compiled into a world and test things out. We got our mirror, we got our button, and there we go. Turns it on and off yeah, as fast as you click. All right, so that is a basic uh, game object toggle uh, that you can put on any button and use for any object, like a mirror or the likes. If you have some background music, you can turn that object on and off. Um, eventually, I'll do a little asset for a button that will basically tell an object to do something a contextual button you'll say um, and that will be in the next video uh, until then I hope you enjoyed